Hey y'all, it's your girl Kenzie Simone and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, however, welcome. Please make sure that you go ahead and subscribe and turn on my post notification bell too. Cause trust me, you don't want to miss any of the videos that your girl got coming your way. So y'all today, as you see from the title of the video, I'm going to be talking to you about starting your business. Let's go ahead and jump right in. Oh my God, it's Kenzie. Kenzie. It's Kenzie Simone. So the number one thing to remember when starting your very own business is to keep your nine to five. I know that it's so sexy to be an entrepreneur and don't have no boss and do all this and all that as an entrepreneur, but y'all gotta remember that your bills still gotta be paid, okay? A lot of times people don't see the other side of entrepreneurship and let me tell you, you can have a great month, you can have a $10,000, $20,000, $50,000 month, and then other months you can make zero dollars and zero cents. That's just what comes with being an entrepreneur. So until you have enough money saved up or a different way to allocate your funds, make sure that you have that steady nine to five income coming in. A lot of y'all may be like, but girl, aren't you an entrepreneur? Most people don't realize that I actually do technically still have a nine to five. Now, I don't work in corporate America. If you've seen any of my videos, you know that we have a family business. I always talk about my family business. It's the best thing that's ever happened to me and to my family. However, I do technically work a nine to five. I do a lot of secretarial work, a lot of back office, making sure that our clients are satisfied, that our agents are getting licensed, and that our business is running smoothly. And so I do have a steady nine to five income coming in. So as much as entrepreneurship is glamorized, don't let them trick you into going broke. Keep your nine to five, okay? The second thing is to have a mentor. It's so important to talk to somebody and to kind of learn the ropes from somebody that's already done it before. That way you don't have to make the same mistakes. Now, if you can't afford a mentor or if you can't find a mentor, there are so many free mentors online. Using YouTube, you can literally research anything. A lot of times people do tell you the truth online. So if you can use different resources like reading books, like watching different videos, do that until you can find an actual person mentor. I believe that it's so great to have an actual person that you can go to and ask questions to and be able to have a conversation with. But if you can't find that in the meantime, make sure that you're not going in blinded. Make sure that you're reading books that you're watching videos and that you're using your resources. Which brings me into my next point of having knowledge. Be knowledgeable. There's two main areas that you have to be knowledgeable in when it comes to starting your own business. The first area is your product and the second area is your target market. Y'all, you have to know what you're selling, like the back of your hand, like the front of your hand, like the side of your hand, you have to know your product like nobody else can because what you don't want is you don't want anyone else coming behind you and saying no actually that product isn't good and then your client coming back to you and you not being able to overcome those objections right so you have to make sure that you're really honing in on your product and mastering what you're selling and then the second thing of course is to be knowledgeable of your target market you may have the best product in the world the best I don't know, eyelashes, but if you're only selling to men, they probably aren't gonna be buying your product. And you might think that, you know, hey, maybe my product isn't good, but hey, maybe you just don't actually understand your target market. So make sure that you're really gaining knowledge in those two areas. The fourth thing is to go into business with other people. I know that a lot of times people glamorize, I do it myself attitude, but why like it literally does nothing but stress you out and you cannot be a one-man show if you want to go fast you can go alone but you're probably gonna fail if you want to go far you've got to go with others build a team you know outsource for different things if you are selling notebooks outsource for someone to make your website 
you know, outsource for someone for, to be a photographer of your products so that you can make sure that you're having top tier, top quality stuff because you can't master everything. It's just literally impossible. And another huge thing about not going into business by yourself is mastering distribution. Please y'all, stop being self-employed. Self-employment is not where it's at. You want to be a business owner. And the only way that you can become a business owner is by making a duplicatable system. The fifth thing is to have representation. Whether that be business cards, whether that be a website, you can literally, if you know, or you're low on funds, you can create your own website using different platforms that have pre-layouts, um, like Wix, Squarespace, different things like that, if you're not super knowledgeable in HTML. But make sure that you have some sort of representation because when you're trying to get your products out there, when you're talking to people, making your pitch, the first thing that people are going to say is, hey, what's your website? I want to be able to do more research. Or if you're out in public and you're doing your pitch, well, I don't know if you're doing that right now because you know coronavirus, but if you are, then hey, you know, do you have a business card? Those are the top two things that people ask for when you're pitching your product to them for the first time. So make sure that you have some sort of representation. The sixth thing is to think of your customer. I know that a lot of times when we are creating a product or creating a service, we're thinking about, hey, what's something that I like? What's something that I would use? And granted, it's great when coming up with the idea, but once you have your idea rolling, you really have to make sure that you're thinking in terms of your customer because your customer is the one that's actually buying your product or service. So you wanna make sure that you are thinking in terms of how they would want things done. Even when you're making your website, you know, hey, I know that I can click here to get to this particular part on the website but is this user friendly is someone coming here for the very first time gonna know hey you know this is how this particular thing works make sure that you're thinking in terms of your customer which leads me to my last point of kiss keep it simple stupid or let me be a little bit nicer keep it simple smarty Keep it simple, babe. Even though you are super knowledgeable in your product and in your service, does not mean that other people are. Whether you can say, you know, hey, this is the most deluxe, complex, top tier, extra product, or you can just say, hey, this is X, Y, and Z, period. People are gonna be much more likely to gravitate to the simplicity of things because people want to make sure that they're understanding what they're purchasing. They don't want things to feel like they're flying over their heads. So even in my family business, when I'm teaching about finances, I'm keeping it as simple as possible because even though I've tested, even though I'm licensed in multiple states in my products and services, most people, when they're talking to me for the first time, have no knowledge or very little knowledge of my actual product. So it's very, very important that I'm breaking things down and keeping them very simple for my customer. Y'all, those are the seven tips that I have when it comes to starting your own business. I really hope that y'all enjoyed this video. If you did, please make sure that you give this video a huge thumbs up and go ahead and leave a comment down below letting me know which tip helped you out the best. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure that you go ahead and subscribe and turn on my post notification bells too so that you don't miss any of the videos that I got coming your way. I will see y'all next time on It's Kenzie Simone. Bye!